Mike Beating here with Tolly Bevilacqua, another longtime veteran of the WNBA. Uh, first season with San Antonio, and so why don't you tell us uh, how's that going for you at this point? You know, it's going great. Um, I really enjoy playing with my with my new teammates under the, the guidance of Coach Dan Hughes. I've really respected him over the years, so I'm enjoying the hot weather there in Texas. And um, as I said, I'm just um, I'm just having fun out there on the court. Now, last time I spoke with Penny Taylor of Phoenix and about Australia's influence in the WNBA. What makes you believe the WNBA is so attractive to players from Australia? We've seen many over the years. Well, I think it's regarded, obviously, as one of the best leagues to play in, um, in the world. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a fun, I mean, you're playing in these great arenas, the NBA arenas. It's the whole package, it's the entertainment. Uh, we, I mean, I love it here in the States. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to come in and adjust to living here in the United States. So it's, it's just that full, complete package. And I think, you know, obviously having many Australians now um, being here and uh, the stories that get passed on. And uh, I think, yeah, a lot of Australians are looking to, to make their way here. How do you believe that help raises the international profile with players like yourself and Penny Taylor and Liz Cambage and Lauren Jackson? Oh, I mean, it's just huge. I mean, obviously, you know, we're so far away in Australia, that, um, but yet because of the players that we have over here, you know, it's, it's brought the WNBA to Australia because, you know, obviously Lauren Jackson having such a high profile, Liz Cambridge now, the youngster on the block, um, they're keeping that uh, profile going here in the WNBA and now, you know, with cable TV in Australia, it's uh, not, that, not that we haven't had cable TV in Australia for a while, but <laughs> now they're showing a lot more games, so people are watching. And I see you've got a piece of that with you with your Beijing 2008 uh, tattoo from the Olympics. <laughs> now, WNBA is in its 15th season. What are the biggest changes and surprises you've seen from your first season in the United States playing pro basketball up to 2011? Well, I think the, the biggest, well, I mean, what I've seen progress, I guess, over those years is the uh, athleticism of the players. Um, I mean, you've got now some phenomenal athletes coming in the league every single year. Um, you know, there's not really that traditional you know, big banging five player that, you know, back when I started, every team kind of had one of those players. More now it's athletic, um, get up and down, your five men are shooting three pointers. I mean, they're just, there's just so much versatility now with the players in the league and then the game has gotten a lot quicker too. I'm just trying to keep up with them all. And where do you see the league growing for the next 15 years? Because it's endured a lot of criticisms, a few ups and downs, contraction, expansion. And here we are 15 years later, we're still playing. Well, that's the good sign, isn't it? We're still here playing through all you know, kinds of things, recession, everything. And um, I mean, it's, it's, a great, it's a great product. So if obviously the league can endure um, these tough times right now, then I, I think there's no stopping it. Eventually, I'm sure there'll be more teams coming in into the the league again and they, you know they we'll see expansion um, but the, the key is obviously not to do that too soon and uh, keep that stability going but I mean it's a great product and I think that uh, sells itself. Now one thing about you you may not have the most impressive stat line of players in your career but how do you control well then again you're still here many years later some yeah. players come in and out so how do you think uh, you contribute and what are some maybe intangibles that folks may not notice if they look at your stat line? Oh, I mean, you, I think you hit the nail on the head there. I'm, I'm not a player that's here because of my stat line. I mean, I would have been out the door a long time ago if you're looking at shooting percentages. You're here longer than I was. Yeah, I'm keeping it real. Um, it, it is those intangible things that, I, that I'm prepared to do. It's, it's throwing my body on the floor to get that loose ball. It's the one percentage things that, you know, I pride myself on doing that's kept me in the league and just hustle in defense and... Um, I, I, you know, I, it doesn't matter what I'm asked to do, I'll go out there and do it 100%. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm short, I'm, I'm non-athletic, so clearly I've been doing those intangibles well. What do you hope to pass on to other Australians uh, who come into the league and maybe just other fans who have seen you endure all these years? I think, you know, not just to Australians, but I guess anyone in general, it's like you don't have to be, you know, the best player to still make a career out of playing sport. You can be a role player and make a career um, and you know I think I'd like to pride myself as being an example of that. It's like you just do some things well and you can find a spot in a team. There's a coach that will always take somebody that will do those one percentage things and uh, it, you know just if it doesn't if things don't work out the first time just keep persisting and uh, you know dreams do come true sometimes. One more question. Anyone you want to say hi to that might be watching this interview? I just want to say good day to all my Aussie mates, um, but no, I just want to also say uh, a big hello to Parker, my son Parker, who's uh, probably not old enough yet to watch uh, 
watch, but uh, he's out there somewhere being taken care of and uh, to all my friends and family. Hey. Well, thanks for speaking with us and uh, congratulations on representing Australia in the way you have. Oh, matey. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi.